Normally, people avoid qualifiers like a plague when it comes to working in DaVinci Resolve. You are making three small mistakes that is keeping you from using one of the most powerful tool that every pro colorist uses. This particular project would have been impossible, genuinely, all caps, impossible, without using qualifiers. And that's why I wanna share with you these techniques because it's something that you need to have in your bag. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so now we're inside Resolve and I wanna show you once and for all how to absolutely master qualifiers and do it really fast. Uh, because at the end of the day, nothing is intimidating as long as you know the logic behind what it is that you're doing. So let's just look at what's happening here. I took three shots and they're in completely different environments, okay? So this one obviously has more green overall in this image. This one is, let's just say this is our baseline. This is neutral, this is looking good. This one is a little bit more on the dingy yellow side and we can see it here. The white should be pure white and it doesn't look like it. So we have to fix those things first. So the main reason why we need to balance our shot before we get into qualifying is because we wanna create as much color separation as possible. So then when we use the color picker inside Resolve, it can easily select that one particular hue because if the image is imbalanced and let's just say if there's a green tint on an entire image, Resolve wouldn't know what you want it to qualify. It's just going to select everything. But once everything is properly balanced, it sits in its own pocket. It's really easy to just select a portion of your image and then build your qualifier around that. So first thing is balance your shot. Let's start with it. So I'm just gonna go call this balance and I wanna pull some of the green out. So I'm just gonna be looking at my vector scope. I'm gonna go in my HDR palette. I'm gonna use my global offset and let's just do before and after. And it's looking a lot cleaner. The white is looking white in the background. This is looking a lot better. This white is looking white. Uh, this is good. This is much better than before. Okay, so let's just say we want to park it here. Now let's go to this shot, come close and do a similar thing. I want to just make the white look pretty white. So like right here, this is looking white. That's it. It's just that simple. So our main job is done now. These shots are balanced. So let's just go ahead and call this balance. Call this balance for consistency's sake. And then Obviously we have our IDT and ODT, so I'm not even messing with that. This is just a simple conversion to Rec. 709. So this is log, this is Rec. 709. And now we did our balance. Now we're just gonna jump straight into qualifying. So let's start with this shot, okay? So let's park right here. I'm gonna go under my qualifier. We're not gonna do anything fancy. We're gonna leave it on the base qualifier and we're going to just make sure right here is set to qualifier and we're going to just swipe like this. And if I do Shift H, it's telling us what we're grabbing. The second part of this equation to have a good qualification is broader strokes, okay? So do not get too granular. We wanna do these broad strokes. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to grab her skin, right? And affect that. So what else is sitting in that world? Well, the skin tones are warm, right? So, I mean, we can even see it right here. The skin tones are sitting in a perfect spot. And then around that, what is in that hue? So maybe this is in the similar hue, but just more saturated, denser. We have hair that is in a similar world, similar hue. So we might be grabbing part of this. So all of those things are okay. Do not restrict your key too much. That is the biggest mistake that people make. So people will just start doing things like let's just take this and start crunching it to something like this because they're trying to like really avoid everything from these areas they're going to go in their saturation and they're going to do something like this they're going to take low saturation and close it off and then they would just like go all right this is looking pretty good but you see what what's happening this chatter all around your footage so if i were to make a change i'm just going to do an exaggerated change so we can really see what we're doing and you're seeing like how all of this is not part of it or selected and how it's like doing this white noise thing, right? Like, look at this. We never, never, ever, ever want that, okay? One of the 
big mistakes that people make when it comes to color grading. They just get in their own head too much and they just think the more complex something is, the better it should be. They don't even know if it is or it isn't. You need to know the complex techniques and tools inside Resolve, but you want to keep chipping away and making the entire process simpler. And that's where you end up with natural looking images that are stylized, pushed, yet still just feel like if it was done in camera or on set. And that is the name of the game for us colorists. And speaking of over-engineering and making big mistakes that are costing you clients, I just put out a fire one hour long training. It is absolutely free, but limited spots available where I'm gonna be showing you five biggest mistakes that you are making right now if you're struggling to get work. So you do not wanna skip that training. Watch it after you finish checking out this video. And in order to avoid that, you don't want to be too, too granular, okay? So I would go back in my saturation and I would just go, like, it's okay. Like, let's just let some of it live. It's not that big of a deal. Let's grab this and I want to I, I wanna make sure that I don't grab the lips, but the rest is totally fine. So this is okay. What do we want to do with my luminance? Like... I don't think we necessarily need to control the shadows. Shadows are just dark, like let them go. So now we're creating a very gentle, soft key. And at this point, a lot of people rely really heavily on blur. Don't do that because that's just going to create a really ugly halo around your footage. So what you want to do is you want to do halo enough where it starts to affect just a hint. So even something like this, something like 13 ish. So it's like softening up some of that chatter that was going on. Now we're going to rely heavily on denoise. So I'm gonna go as far as somewhere around in the 40s, okay? So somewhere around here, and if I come out now, and even now, if I just do something really strong and then try to play it, you're gonna see that it's gonna latch on. So let's play it. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. This is very, very realistic. Wherever we wanna go, we can go. And now let's just say if I'm like putting a lot of life into my image, right? And then I'm gonna start doing uh, gamma and gain together. So I'm gonna go gamma down, gain up. I'm just trying to create more contrast, let's just say. So if I do something like that, I don't wanna do too much because I don't wanna make her look dirty. But for example's sake, I wanna exaggerate it a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna bring some of the magenta back. So if I do before and after, like look at the amount of difference that we made in our skin tones. Like it's hard to believe that we started with this and even this was looking good. And now how much life we added. I mean, just look at that. So that's why qualifier are a very important part of color grading. So just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean that it's bad. And that's what I wanted to show you here, like the power of it, that I use qualifiers pretty much on every single project because like, look at what we just did. I mean, we can just keep going, right? Like if we just wanna kind of, again, for the example's sake, to see what's happening. If I would have pushed my blur too much and didn't rely on denoise, it would have been really nasty and you would have seen haloing around my image. Best part about what we just created here, I can just come here, copy it and paste it and now if I do Shift H, you're seeing exactly what's happening. Because our shot is locked in and it is well balanced, it is only applying these changes on skin hue areas. So it's grabbing all of this, which is great. But like the chatter is very, very controlled. And if I just hit play, nothing is going to look fake or jump out. Like look at this. So if I do before and after, it's making world of a difference. It's making such a massive difference. I can punch in really hard and then play it back and you'll see nothing is going to break. It just brings so much life. Adding this sort of life into your image without qualifier, impossible. Now we can do the same thing here. Like, look at this, what? If I do Shift H, it latches on. Why? Because we balance our image first. And if I do a playback, of course it's gonna latch on. Why wouldn't it? Nothing is going to jump out. Nothing is going to look fake. Softening your key the way I did it is the biggest technique, biggest secret I can share with you. This is something that kept me from using qualifiers, let's just say for the first 10 years of my color grading career. So now you know everything that I do 90% of the time when I'm using qualifiers inside Resolve. So if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, smash the like button, share this video with friends. 
and spread the love. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out my next video. If you have any content suggestions, drop them down below. Check out the training right now before the spots filled up. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.